today, get a sneak peek of the Microsoft integration hands-on labs coming up at Converge 2023. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone, and boy, do we have a treat for you today. We've got a team of legendary TAMs here to talk about the Microsoft Integration Labs that will be running at Converge this year. Now, if you've not signed up already, it's not too late. Go to converge.tanium.com and follow the links for the labs. And I've also put links here in the show notes below. But I sure hope you can meet us there because if, if you can find me at Converge, all right, you've got your choice between between two pieces of limited edition swag, all right? We've got a Tech Talk sticker or a Tanium guitar pick. Find me at Converge, and the choice is yours. You have to pick one. All right, so so let's jump, jump right into the show today. So we're going to take a look at these three Microsoft integration labs. Now, first up with me on the show today uh, are Kyle and Dries with the Sentinel Lab. So welcome to the show, guys. Uh, Kyle, introduce yourself for our audience. Hey, everyone. Kyle DeBoer here. I'm a director of technical account management. I work the public sector uh, area for Tanium. All right, and Dries? Hello, oh, Dries. I'm uh, Tam as well, so I think I got manager as well, but in EMEA in Belgium. Tell us what is the title and the objective of your lab this year? So the title of our lab is called uh, SOC Workforce we're leveraging Microsoft and Tanium. So what does that mean? That we want to check um, real-time data, log analytics using both Tanium and Microsoft. So log analytics from the Microsoft side and losing real-time data from Tanium. And then we're going to using QQL, uh, collect data, visualize data, um, take actions on them, contextualize the real-time data and take actions if necessary. And then of course we can take actions on that later in the later phase as well. Oh, that's great. You know, I've heard a lot about KQL lately, <clears throat> that that's, that's a query language in Sentinel and that now you can actually use that to query data coming back from Tanium. That's really interesting. Kyle, I think you've got a demo queued up for us. What can you give us a teaser for what we'll see in that lab? Absolutely. So the goal here is to uh, consolidate uh, the, uh, the security operations center workflows into a single console. And so in this particular demo environment, we've got your, your typical dashboards and we can go into any one of these incidences, 26281. Ashley, if you remember that number for us later, we'll use it as we uh, yeah, as we do a further investigation. But from this main uh, details view, we can actually execute a series of playbooks. Now within Sentinel, playbooks are gonna collect information. Um, and then workbooks are going to be uh, you know, visuals where we uh, aggregate and display that information. So what I'm showing you here is, is an example of, of two playbooks that I've run, one that will get the general host information and then one that will collect compliant information. And you can hey, see that I'm querying hey, real-time so, data. I, all right, I got a question. I go back to playbooks. Because I'm just, I know we've showed this on the show before, but I want our viewers to see this right there. When you go into the playbooks list, uh, there's a lot of things you can do with Tanium right there. Kind of just reading down those titles. We got comply, host info, SBOM data, definitive. Sorry to, sorry to jump in like this. It just makes me excited to see this kind of Tanium stuff being triggered right out of Sentinel. That That's really cool. Yeah, and what makes this really powerful is that um, one of the... Uh, if you look at maturity within a security operations center, one of the indicators of maturity is repeatability and predictability, right? How we do things, if we're able to do it in a repeatable, predictable way, that's where we're able to optimize the outcomes. And in this particular case, I don't need to do the engineering. I don't need the smartest person to run the playbook. What I need is, is someone who understands the outcomes that playbook generates. And so it allows me to almost... I don't want to say commoditized because cyber hunting is is a uh, very uh, uh, you know it, it's a uh, it's a it's a um, cognitive activity right but by by packaging what I'm looking for in terms of real time data into a playbook I can accelerate that particular process which will compress my uh, my SOC uh, workflows come into the main uh, display here and this is just this is the, sort of the high level. 
within this workflow uh, or within within the, within this uh, this visual, I can go into my incident log and rapidly see the uh, the details that I just collected. I can even comment on it. You know, validated host host and comply info. As I make those comments, uh, all of this is interesting in terms of I'm seeing you know some interesting details. When I come into the incident, the, the powerful aspect is when I can get into the workbook and I can come in, uh, add my my uh, incident ID two six two eight two. And right away, I'm going to start to see real-time data associated with this particular endpoint. So I can go in and and I can capture my host information. I can scroll down and and I've got uh, Microsoft has a a, a tremendous resource in in uh, SOC workflows and and a analyzing um, the the next steps of of, of how you should hunt. Um, we can we can query uh, the host to uh, to get additional details associated mm -hmm. with uh, with this particular uh, incident. Um, I can query threat intelligence, All right? So I, I can rapidly pull out S bomb data related to uh, in this particular uh, visual is showing the various versions of OpenSSL in this particular environment. Um, Really, what 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 this integration allows, and it's a Tanium developed integration, which is a logic app that goes right into right into a Tanium instance to pull in information based on the the sense a selected sensor. So essentially, there is no limit to the type of data that I can pull in to Sentinel uh, from Tanium, and what that does is that allows a SOC uh, analyst to tailor the data they're ingesting so that they're getting just the right data to make just the right decision in just the right time. Man, this is fantastic. So there are a lot of labs coming up at Converge this year. Why should they pick your lab? Our lab breaks down the, the stovepipes that exist based on uh, legacy technologies. Because Tanium is real time and sees everything and allows you to do anything and works with you know, uh, Sentinel or, or other seams or other shores, Tanium is the idea, ideal data plane from which you can contextualize and visualize critical information uh, within your SOC, within your risk portfolio, within your software management portfolio, within your IT ops. And so it allows you to get more ver versatility out of your tools because your tools are working together to drive those decisions. Yeah, I just want to say that that. Using Tanium, the real-time data of Tanium in the combination with the intelligence and the same um, capabilities of, of Sentinel, then in combination with possibly other data coming from other devices like network devices, etc., we can create really fast actions intelligence and the two-way APIs basically take actions in the real time very quickly. So it's not only about getting the data in a very quick way, but it's also about taking actions, smart actions in a very quick way. And I think this is what this integration is all about. Well, thank you guys for this teaser on the Microsoft Sentinel Integration Lab coming up at Converge. And now we're going to shift over to our next lab. So up next, we have Doug Thompson with the Azure AD Lab. And some of you are aware Azure AD is now called Intra. So uh, depending on what you're looking at, you might see Azure AD or Intra. So depending on the, the branding at the moment that you're looking at. But Doug, uh, welcome to the show. I am so glad you're here. After two years of working together on podcasts and video stuff, we finally get to do a show together. Doug Thompson, I am a technical account manager. I am down here in Austin, Texas. So you'll be coming, if you're coming to Converge, you'll be in my backyard. Please look me up and I'll show you some hot spots. But anyway, I'm doing the lab along with a couple of my peers, uh, starting from zero, getting to zero trust. It's Tanium and Intra ID is the name of the lab. So it's both a physical and virtual lab. So you'll be able to do it either way. Let me go ahead and show you just to give you a couple of teasers of why you should come to the lab. Been, if you've been in your console lately, if you're a Tanium customer, you may have come in and seen this new this new workbench here called Zero Trust and wondered, well, what is that? So the Zero Trust piece of this is, is where we're talking to Intra ID and we're providing the device attestation. Now, for those of you that, that aren't real sure what zero trust is, is it's a, it's a philosophy 
that, you know, e even when I was back at Microsoft where I came to Tame, we've been professing for, whew, how long is it, Ashley? I mean, that's been around for yeah. a decade almost, I think. But, it, but it's been hard to do. And especially when you're looking at the device attestation piece, because the, the one of the taxes that you have or the friction that you get from adopting this is the t user timeout period. You, you get put in a penalty box while they check you. So at zero trust is, hey, trust the user, right? And every time I try to get your resource, do I trust this user to access this resource? And another part you can add, do I trust the device? Right, because right now with malware coming out, all you need is one infected machine to get on your network and then it's game over your own. So how do I trust the device that, that they're accessing on? Because I can access it for me when the COVID really blew this up. So the problem is, is while I'm trying to access things to do work, I need, and I'm you're testing my device, looking at my device, the solutions that existed out there made this untenable. You know, it, it could be hours or so before I could, my, my attestation can be hours old. A lot of mouse clicks can happen in hours. You know how many emails do you have that you can get infested? So it says it's good, but I've clicked a mouse thing. I've got malware now. Am I really trusted to bring it down? And the second part of that is if I am found out of tolerance, my device is not healthy, how long does it take me to get back in? Do I have to wait for the patch cycle to go on? Do I have to do these other things? So literally, I could be sitting here twiddling my thumbs for days and not be able to access and do my work because of something went on. So, so to frame this up, so, so to frame this up, zero trust means I'm a user. I'm coming at the network from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. I could be working from home or a coffee shop or in the land, even at the office. Mm -hmm. But I trust nobody. Mm -hmm. And if my machine is, uh, I don't have my AV up to date or whatever. I can right. look at all these things and Tanium is going to help people check that faster. That's mm -hmm. what I'm hearing you say than all the yep. traditional methods. So they're less downtime for the user. Correct. Not only I'm, I'm giving more up-to-date information on the device, as you said, so I can do this, but also if, if there is a problem, I can have it resolved faster with Tanium. And that sort of shortens that window where I'm not productive. Again, trust, you know, verify the user is who they say they are, verify the device is healthy. That's the two pieces of that. And we're providing the device attestation piece of that. Here's the connector piece. This is where the magic goes on back and forth. As I'm looking through the workbench here, I'm going to create rules to look for specific things. You can see we've got some rules created here already. Um, for example, like we've got bit lockers disabled, right? So I'm not going to allow them here if I find it disabled. And it works a lot like in creating the rules. Again, not to go through everything, but I'm going to go through here and target an endpoint. And this should look familiar to you by like asking questions, right? So I'm looking for specific criteria here to say, okay, in, in this case, is BitLocker enabled? If, it, if it's not enabled, then what I would do is go down here and use one of these extension attributes. There's 15 of them that Microsoft allows us to write to. And then put something in there, no BitLocker, right? So I'm putting a text string in here. Something in there that, that, that enter ID is going to leverage and use. So if I go to the Azure side of this, where we're in the conditional access, these are where I'm creating the rules to connect. So again, you'll have this experience where I'm in here being able to go in and create one of these conditional access policies to do this, where I'm creating a new policy and I'm going to go ahead and give it the condition. Again, conditional access means if you meet this condition, you get access. So we're looking for devices, we're going to go through here, configure this. And again, we'll look for the extension attribute. Say I chose 15 on the other side. We'll say equals and no, no, no uh, bit locker. And if we found something with that, they would not get access. Right. So that's what we're going to be working on on this. It's pretty straightforward to go through. But if you're not familiar with Azure, you know, it, it's a little, you know, we want to sort of teach you what that looks like without having to. We've got a great, great course here and an opportunity to get, and get hands on on both sides of the ball. Well, that's exactly what I think a lot of people are looking for because, you know, there's there's no end of configuration screens on both sides. So you, you're going to show people, okay, you go to this configuration screen, mm -hmm. take this token or whatever and paste it over on this, on the other side and everything starts talking. I just love to watch this work because when we set it up, it really doesn't take that long. And all of a sudden you see this data 
going back mm-hmm. and forth. And yeah, that's great. So uh, thank you, Doug, for this tour of the Intra ID Lab, a.k.a. Yeah. Azure AD and Zero Trust. So maybe this is one that you want to sign up for as you come to Doug's hometown at Converge or do it online at Converge this November. And now our next Microsoft lab coming up at Converge this year is around MDE, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And joining me for this is Rob, who's one of the lab facilitators that you'll get to meet in person at Converge this year. Welcome to the show, Rob. Uh, Introduce yourself for our audience. I'm a TAM based out of the UK, Uh, been with Tanium a couple of years now. Um, I primarily work with financial and telecoms customers, but we've, uh, we've seen a real need for the the MDE content that we've put together this year across lots of different customers. So it's, it's good to bring it to Converge. So, so what's the title of your lab that people should look for when they're signing up and what are you trying to accomplish with this lab? Sure. So this is deploying and managing Microsoft Defender for Endpoint using Tanium. So the, the premise behind this is we're seeing an increasing number of customers buying Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, that could be part of an E5 bundle, for example. Um, What they then almost immediately run into is, uh, how can I deploy this? How can I configure it? How can I manage it? How can I report on it? Um, Helpfully, they've already got Tanium out across their estate. Um, So we could be deploying MDE on Windows boxes. It could be Linux. It could be Mac. And we can help across the, the whole spectrum here so you're not tied to a particular platform. Um, so as well as deploying the software in the first place, we can then help you configure it. So that could be within force. We can then start to report on its adoption. We can look at detailed information. So all the stuff that you're already familiar with doing with Tanium. Um, we've produced content, which is uh, what we'll be showing you at uh, Converge, that allows you to see how you're doing with MDE. And then finally, from an ongoing perspective, you know, I, I've completed my rollout. I think I've completed my rollout. We can help you remove your legacy antivirus software. We'll show you how to do that. And we can find the gaps. So I think I've completed it, but actually I haven't. Or perhaps some of it's broken. It hasn't worked correctly. Perhaps it's not updating and my scans working as they should be. So really easy to consume dashboards and content um, to help you understand what the real health of Defender for Endpoint is. Man, this this is fantastic. I just I really like the fact that this is cross platform, right? Windows, Mac, and Linux. You know, you're talking about rip and replace AV solutions. This is really the Swiss Army knife. I think a lot of people are looking for when they want to migrate to MDE. Uh, now they've got all the tooling and Tanium to do it. It looks like. Yeah, absolutely. the The idea is that we bring it together in one place, so we're not sending you over here to deal with one platform and somewhere else for another. It's the usual Tanium story. It's single tool, single console. Oh, that's great. So Rob, uh, who are you targeting specifically with this lab? Why would people pick your lab over all the others that converge this year? (laughs) Well, obviously ours is the best. Um, However, (laughs) if you're you're considering Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, um, I would really suggest that you come and do the lab, talk to us. Myself and Casey will be obviously in the room. So if there are things that are peculiar to your deployment and you'd like some additional help or input, then obviously we're, we're more than happy to talk about that. Um, or perhaps you're considering MDE and you want to understand how it could work in your environment and what a deployment would look like. Again, this is a little bit of your time that would I would imagine would be very useful invested in this lab. Thanks for coming and giving us a uh, sneak peek at this MDE Microsoft Defender lab coming up for Converge. This is going to be fantastic. I just can't wait uh, for everybody to get in these labs, get hands on. So thanks for joining us on the show today. Not at all. Thanks, Ashley. All right, folks, there we go. Strategic platform partnership. This is a key word that a lot of people are doing these days. They're looking to, hey, I've got Tanium, I've got Microsoft. I can make these things work together and simplify my environment. You're going to get hands-on with these opportunities with Sentinel, Intra-ID, a.k.a. Azure AD, and Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. You're going to get labs from all three of those, uh, if you could, but you got to sign up for them now because they will fill up. So you can do those in person in Austin, Texas, or online with the virtual experience. So go to converge.tanium.com, sign up for those labs today before they fill up. So that wraps us up for this episode of Tanium Tech Talks. Till next time. 
Go Tatum.